Now, here's the idea. We're going to make some rectangles out of this. I introduced the idea already. We're making rectangles. We already have the bases of our rectangles. We got this and this and this and this, and they're all equal, right? That's going to make them very easy to add together later, which is nice. But what we've got to do is find out how tall our rectangles are, how high they are. Because in order to find the area of a rectangle, we're going to find the, the base, the base, times whatever the height is, right? We need to find a way to find the height. Once we do that, we'll have all these rectangles. We'll add them together. It'll be very nice and easy. But here's how we're going to find the height. What you're going to do is you're going to pick an arbitrary point, arbitrary point, somewhere in this interval. We'll call it. Uh, let me write it down first. Pick an arbitrary point. What's arbitrary mean? Random. You're going to find out that it's not going to make a difference at the end of our problem. Pick an arbitrary point for each sub-interval. Bigger. Bigger is always better, right? So you can see it. You okay with that? Here's what we're going to do. Pick an arbitrary point, some random point in between there. Now, i got to explain to you why it doesn't have to be a specific point, but why it could be a random point. <laughs> Because as soon as I start stacking infinite number of rectangles in there, as soon as I let my n go to zero, the width, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let my n go to infinity, this distance becomes zero. Does that make sense? n goes to infinity, number of rectangles goes to infinity, the distance between them, finite divided by infinity goes to zero, right? Goes to zero. So that means that any point I pick is going to be really just squished. It's going to be bound between two numbers that are different. So it's going to be between there, certainly between, but it's not going to matter where it was because it's going to be squished in there no matter what. Right? It's like trying to put two hairs together and saying find the distance between them. Well, there's something in between them, but it doesn't really matter because they're so thin anyway. Who cares? So we'll pick some arbitrary point. Let's call it that's a horrible line. That arbitrary point, we're going to call this x sub 1 dot. Yeah, I know. Is that a technical term? Yeah. x sub 1 dot. What the dot stands for is some arbitrary point. Doesn't matter where it is. And here we'll pick x2 dot. And so on, and so on, and so on. Here's what we're going to do with x1 dot and x2 dot and so on and so on and so on. We're going to take those values, the, the x values, plug them into our function, and that's going to give us the height at that exact point. Does that make sense to you? So what we're basically doing is saying, I want you to find the height here. I want you to find the height here. Now I want you to find the height here at x3 dot. This one, by the way, would be xn dot, not n minus 1, that's the previous one. That's xn dot. That says that you have n rectangles. Do you see what I'm talking about? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, n. n. At each of those points, what we do is we say, all right, Understand that this is the width of a rectangle right there. If I go up from this arbitrary point, it's going to give me the height of that rectangle. Do you follow that? You build your rectangle around that. So you go, okay, that's going to be the height of my rectangle. Now 
my next rectangle is going to have this height. My next rectangle is going to have this height. And you keep going all the way down. The, next, the last one would have this height. So we pick an arbitrary point for each subject, subsection and make a rectangle. Now, I don't want to redraw this picture, so I'm going to go one more step. I'm going to show you why we do what we do. Okay, because I don't want to redraw this. I'm going to show you one exploded version of one of these rectangles. Understand that we can extrapolate and get this picture back from each one individually just by adding them together. Do you understand the concept of this first, though? Cutting this into equal subsections. Find the height of each one at an arbitrary point, then to find the area, we'll just add up the rectangles. It will be an approximation for right now. I'll show you how to make it better later. Here's the, the each rectangle. So the height of it, each rectangle. Let's say that I just take one of my rectangles, my arbitrary point is any x, whatever I'm talking about, k, dot, x of 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or, or n, whatever that is, dot. Next time when we start back, we're going to start with this picture. We're going to find out the width of each one, which is already on the board. We'll find out the height of each one. Therefore, we'll be able to find the area since it's a rectangle. Add them all up together, and you're going to see why we have the integral that we do uh, from these areas. Does today make sense for you? So we're, we're right in the middle of trying to find the area under a curve. And what we've realized is that this is the second rectangular method. We're breaking up this area into equal width rectangles. And then we're going to find the area of each rectangle, add them all together. That should give us at least an approximation for the area under, under curve. Now, it's going to be a little off because, as you see, we're under and over the curve at certain spots. So this is going to be an approximation to start with. We'll talk about how to make it better later. I, I think I gave you a preview on that last time. What I've done here is I've taken one of our rectangles, and we're going to try to find the area of, of one of these rectangles. So notice that we, we're somewhere within A to B. You follow me on that? Now, I gave you some definition for the width of each of the rectangles last time. How much do we call the width? It was B minus A over N that gave us the width of each one, but we had a, uh, a term for it. Delta X. That's the width of each sub-interval. Do you follow me on that? So this, this width is delta X. Of course, it's important to have something that, that represents that because, well, we're going to take base times height to find the area of a rectangle, so that's important. Now, also, we called this, we had a point in here somewhere. Now, this looks like a midpoint, but it didn't have to be. What was that point? What was it, how did you find point. that point? Was it an arbitrary point? It's some arbitrary point. X. Arbitrary means it could be anywhere. X. Anywhere within that little sub-interval, and it has a dot. We call it x sub 1 or x sub 2 or x sub 3, whatever, but a dot, meaning an arbitrary point that's within that rectangle, in the, the first rectangle or the second or whatever the indices say, that's what we're in. So if this is the, since I'm being kind of generic here, this is the kth rectangle, right, whatever I'm talking about, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, kth, whatever, this is the x sub k dot. That's the arbitrary point at somewhere in that rectangle. You feel all right with that? Now, how we use that arbitrary point, we just said, well, at that, at that arbitrary point in my subinterval, <coughs> what I want to do, I want to make my rectangle that height. That way it can have at least some stopping point. Not always the left, not always, it doesn't really matter where it's at, but at, at some point, I'm going to make it go up to the function, and that's where I'm going to draw my top of my rectangle. Do you follow that? Well, here's what we need to do now. We need to come up with some way to find the area of a rectangle. I just spoke about it, but how do you find the area of a rectangle? Base times height. Base is done. 
They're all going to be delta x. That's nice. What's the height going to be? The length of, would you agree it's the length of that right there? Yes. Where my arbitrary point is, right? Because remember, the arbitrary point gave us the height. And the height is based on the function. So if this is, let's call this f of x. If that's f of x, how tall is that? f of x is How would you find, so some people, I can tell you, you're a little bit lost on this. How could you find the height? Let's say that this point just happened to be 4. Let's just pretend it was at x equals 4. You would you plug in 4. Plug in 4 to what? So would you agree that if this was a 4, the height would be f of 4? Right? If that was a 7, that would be f of 7. Do you agree? Because f of whatever gives you the height of whatever. This is our whatever, x, k dot. So the height of this rectangle, which means the height of this line is the height of the rectangle. The height of this line is the function's height at that point. The function's height at that point. f of x, k dot. Yes, no? Yes. Yeah, the guys over here? Okay. So let's say this. Let's talk about the height of each rectangle. Since we already did this, we know. Well, the height of the first rectangle, now this was every single rectangle we could think of, right, has this height. What's going to be the height of the first rectangle? Well, let's, let's, let's look at it. It'd be f of x1 dot, right? Whatever the first arbitrary point is, we go up to that height, that's the height of the rectangle. Make sense? That'd be the first, first rectangle. Then the second one will be f of x2 dot, and then so on, all the way when we get to f of x sub n dot our last arbitrary point that's somewhere between x sub n minus 1 and b, the ending point <coughs> of our interval. So that would be our last arbitrary point, x n dot. They give us n rectangles. That's exactly what we want. You're, sure, you're still OK, yeah? Now the fun part comes. Everything's going to make sense now. Oh, this is so cool. Aren't you excited? I'd be excited if I was in your shoes. Now, I'm still excited, and I know how to do this, so that's pretty impressive. You should be excited. I'm building this up, because it's going to be very exciting. Exciting. You're building it up too much. Dang it. <laughs> Ruin the suspense. Area of a rectangle. You said this like three times now, but the area of a rectangle is base times height. Well, for each rectangle, then, let's look at the base times the height. Would you agree the base is delta x for every single one of these rectangles? So here, here look. Here's the height of every rectangle, right? <coughs> Here's the base of every rectangle. Therefore, the area of every rectangle would be f of x sub 1 dot times delta x. This is the area of the first rectangle.